1985 was the 200th anniversary of Withering's publication in 1785 and I thought it would be a good idea to publish a celebratory volume. And so I approached Oxford University Press and suggested a history of the use of foxgloves in medicine over the years because by that time I'd amassed a lot more information about the subject including the history of the 19th century and of course the 20th century some of which I'd been involved in myself. Uh, they agreed and I suggested almost as an afterthought really that we should accompany my own history of the subject with an annotated edition of Withering's original monograph because nobody had done that before. So we got a, a copy of the monograph on loan, I think it was from the Royal College of Physicians, and produced a, a facsimile which I annotated in the margins explaining all the 18th century terms that might not be familiar to modern physicians, explaining who the people were to whom Withering refers in his text, botanists, herbalists, other physicians, explaining the nature of the experiments he did and the observations he made, the possible diagnoses and the cases he describes. And I then appended to that my own history of the use of the foxglove throughout the, the centuries since then and it was called after his his book was called An Account of the Foxglove and some of its medical uses so I called mine An Account of the Foxglove and its medical uses <laughs> uh, 1785 to 1985 uh, that was published to mark the bicentenary and uh, a, sm a short, a small print run of about 800 volumes I think which now sells on Amazon and other places for some sort of ridiculous sums, I don't know how much. Uh, it was also, to my surprise, translated into Spanish. And that happened because uh, a German drug company, one of the Buringers, either Ingelheim or Mannheim, I can't remember which, decided they wanted to send copies of this around South America in Spanish as a kind of advertisement uh, for their products. Uh, I, first I demurred. I didn't want my book associated with uh, a, a drug company as advertisement, but uh, the publishers persuaded me that they had agreed with the company not to put their logo on the book, on the translation, and so I agreed to have that done, and I believe they published 3,000 copies in Spanish translation. I can't speak to the nature of the translation, but it exists and it presumably was spread around various South American countries at that time. That text that I wrote led me into other areas in medical history, and I have written occasionally articles about other aspects of the history of pharmaceutical compounds, of therapeutic compounds, and I was then subsequently invited to become a member of the Wellcome Trust's History of Medicine Units and Grants panel. Uh, a very good friend and colleague of mine, Irving Loudon, who had been a general practitioner in Wantage in Oxfordshire and had given up general practice to become, in, in the end, a very eminent medical historian researching obstetric history, had served as the medical member of the Grants and Units panel and he suggested that I might be invited as the token doctor onto that panel and so I joined it and spent seven years on that panel learning a lot about medical history from professional historians uh, and a very interesting and educative time it was.